Some of you probably got the email because I want to go over the shortest professional game. But I think it's kind of funny. Do we have any guesses on how many moves it lasted? Sure, sure. Games? Actually, that's a good guess. Anyone want to guess how many, uh, how many moves? This, this, is the, this is the shortest, I should say, non resignation game. That's what I was about. Uh, yeah. uh, non resignation. Okay. 50? 120 moves. How many? 120. 120? 50? 50? 90. 90. 89. 99. 99. 102. 102. Well, what if one person doesn't show up? <laughs> That's resignation. That's resignation. That's, is it? Yeah. That counts as a, as a yeah. resigned game. Or a so this game was played out. It has a finite number of moves. Like, they were actually recorded. Were the Dames filled for All the Dames... Were all the Dames filled? I think there, there might have been, like, two left. Large. I think there might have been two Dames left. Okay. But it was Japanese rule, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, before, before we get to the number of moves, uh, the two players were involved. Uh, Black was played by Takamiya Masaki, who we've, we've talked about a lot in this class, probably too much at this point. But we'll just continue. This is like the year of learning about Takamiya, apparently. Maybe next year will be KJ or something. I'll just have like a go player for like a whole year. Um, does Takamiya playing the shortest number of moves surprise you? Like, is this surprising? No. No, why not? Well, he's, he's so, he's so Moyo oriented and, and I mean, where that tends to be a uh, fighting game with more moves, it, uh, it could also... It, it could also easily just mean, I just get the middle. Exactly. Right, the thing is, is that for, for Takamiya, right, he likes the middle, right? This area is biggest, right? Something he would say. So if his opponent just lets him have it and never invades, the game's going to be quite short. Uh, white player is Cho Yu, who uh, is also a very strong Nindan uh, Japanese player. Um, if Iyama Yuta wasn't just killing everybody in Japan right now, we'd probably refer to actually Cho Yu as probably like, you know, certainly the top three strongest Japanese players. So a really strong uh, Japanese player. Um, he tends to be more territory oriented. Um, but, you know, in this game, he'll, he'll, he's got a little special strategy to deal with Takamiya. And so Takamiya opens Nirensei, which is very, very common for him, right? Because what does this do? Secures corners. Gets the two corners. Outside. Yeah, it focuses outside, right? If he wanted the two corners, he would have played this. He doesn't want the two corners. He wants you to go live in the corners. And so that way, he can take the outside. That's what he wants. Um, Cho Yu responds the same. You want the outside. Yeah, this is the same idea. Like, oh, you want the outside? Me too. Me too. This is, this is play. Uh, Takamiya plays Nirens, or sorry, Sanrensei. Trick takes that Nirensei, the two star points, to the three star points. And uh, this is also very common. He likes this a lot. He plays this very often. Cho Yu, Yu responds there. Very common approach. What do you expect Black to do here normally? Yeah, this would be very common. In induce white to go in the corner. That way I get the outside. Very common. If you're playing very crudely, you could play something like this. Sometimes special case, you play this. Um, we, don't, we don't really expect to move here, though. Yeah, why not? Yeah, this is like too close. This is over-concentrated. Not efficient. All of our stones are one side of the board. Right? We want to have big dreams. We want to develop this territory naturally as something large. Uh, but Takamiya doesn't play any of these. He's like, you want the outside? I want the outside. I'm going to take more of the outside first. This is totally viable. This is, this is, this is fine. You don't have to respond to your opponent's approach. All right, special move time. This move's killer. So... What, what, is, what would white normally do? What would you think white would normally do? Take the corner. Yeah, take the corner. Like, hey, over here, buddy. You, like, left me all these points. But 
this wouldn't be in line with what both players are thinking. What do both of these players want in this game? Or both want the outside. So go for the middle. I win. I win. This is not the move that's played. Uh, this one? That's not a bad guess, but Cho Yu has something else prepared. Maybe a two-point approach on the lower stone? So like just invade? No, the other side entirely. Over here? Uh, maybe up a line. Oh, like here? Okay. Yeah, but it feels like white's going to build this and black's going to build this. and I don't know. It's, it's, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. That's not any place. Easy way. White place here. The eyes light up. Why is this normally a terrible idea? It's on the fifth rank. Yeah, we're already, what, what, this is the fourth white move of the game, and white's already playing fifth line. Right, we're just abandoning hope of making territory. And instead, what are we trying to do? Fight. We're not really fighting, though. This isn't really a fighting move. If black had played something like here, and we played this, and then counterpincered with this, and made this formation, this would be a fighting formation. But these two stones are not there. You just take away potential from the corner. Yeah, we're, well, we're, if black is trying to build this, we're just like jabbing this dagger right into the side of it. Like, just very simply, like, we're just saying, okay, black, I know what you want. You want this. I'm going to play this really stupid, dumb looking move to just make, just puncture it on one side, right? We're just going to puncture that balloon. And there's also four stalls, like, black doesn't want to counterattack now. It feels like black will owe a move over here. And if black is forced to sort of take this as territory, all of a sudden, what is white getting? Yeah, white is the one who's actually fighting for the large moyo in the middle. So, indeed, black does play here. And white goes, ah, oh, you like that? Oh. <laughs> Keep it going. And especially like in, in the late 1970s and early 80s, Takamiya actually, this, this is the best way, this game is played in 2003. So it's, I mean, it's a little bit old, a little bit dated, but it's a, again, the shortest number of moves game, at least that I can find in my database. Um, granted, it might, I haven't, I haven't checked for like the most recent games, maybe someone played a really shorter game than this, but for like, as far as we have recorded, I believe this to be the shortest game. Maybe someone out there on the internet will correct me and say, last year, you know, these two players played moves that all, a game that only had 57 moves. It was amazing. Which really is amazing, right? Because it takes 19 moves to get across the board. And so you have two players just build a wall here. That's 38 moves. So that would be really amazing, actually. But anyway, White plays here, right? Let's just continue it. Let's force Takamiya to take fourth line territory. Because he doesn't really like doing that, right? Especially it makes him... It's not his style of game. That probably takes something across the middle, no? Hmm? For white or for black? No, for black. Well, how does he take the middle? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 uh, we have black's move now, It's black's move, yeah. Oh, it's two sided, two sided. <laughs> two sided stones here. Black plays here. It, well, but it's good timing. Okay. Because normally you'd respond here, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, the problem is if you respond here and then you want to play this later on. Maybe white has better responses. Maybe instead of just connecting, white would play something like this. Okay. Or even like this. Or this. Right? Later on, black uh, might not get the response he wants. So he's going to peep first. He's going to play here. And the same thing happens down here. Black's going to make this exchange. And then finally, black will come and play this. So he's going to play these asking moves first. Like, white, can you just make the really, like, the only shape? I'm going to give you no flexibility right now because I want you to make your one stick shape, and then I'll get all the moves I want. All right, so who do you like at this point? Black, black. Why do you like black? It's got the whole side. It's got the whole side, fourth line territory. How are there still? That's a pretty nasty invasion. And when white is so solid here, there's still Aji at these peeps that we can use. And white's really just one move off of using that wall to get a lot of territory on the inside. This is true. This is true. It does look like white gets more move in here and 
white will have the big moyo in the center. All right, but uh, actually white makes another exchange here first. And then, and then, white says, oh, let's play another asking move. So I got my big wall. I prevented you from getting the middle. I gave you a bunch of points in theory, but again, there's still these pokes to invade. So let's ask another question. Which way do you want to block? Black. Which way does black want to develop? To the right, across. Black wants to build a wall here or here? Uh, one, yes, two. Go one. Go one? Yeah. You go two? How many people go one here? Like this. Raise your hands. Four, five, six. How many people go two here? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of you either weren't paying attention or have no opinion? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Okay, good. <laughs> three way tie. Black box this way. Oh, this is there. Is that. Did I, did I, I just misplayed the stone. Different size. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Now everybody knows exactly where they want. Uh, now everybody's like, of course he blocks this way. <laughs> of course. Of course. Actually, when this stone is here, this way is worse. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, that's your point, though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is better. Okay, white plays here. What's Joseki moves? What are options? Um, the Hane. Hane is perhaps most common. Any other choices? Z-Way? Well, I'm just thinking about uh, for the white, so go yes. down. Black, black, oh, yeah. here? Yeah. Yes, good. Any other options? Tanuki, you can, but very rare. Like, this is probably not that Tanuki will. If you want Sente, the usual move for black to get Sente is here or here. Because this usually ends in Gote for black, if black cares about the integrity of the wall on the outside. Um, but if you want Sente, you can play here or play here. Uh, does black want, does black need Sente right now? Is black really interested in Sente? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes more than others, though. <laughs> Right? Sometimes like, sente is just big. It's not urgent. In this case, well, yeah, what makes, what makes sente so valuable right now? That wall white is yeah. amazing. Yeah. This wall doesn't quite have a proper extension yet. So black really, really, really wants sente. So he's not going to play this variation. Black plays this variation. And the normal continuation from here, let's relate to attach. If black wants sente, black can tanuki right now. And if he doesn't, the normal continuation will actually end in gote, but black gets a locally a very strong result. Right, white will come away with sente. But later on, black will also have more endgame to actually squeeze us into nothing and get a very nice outside. Okay. Why does that move sente? Which move? The. No, no, no. Um, this one? This one? Before no, the, the first one you played in the exchange. The first. Oh, having yeah. this here? Yeah. Because it will kill white. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think. No, actually, it's. Artist there? Yes, actually, that makes Ko, though. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's, oh, it's only Sente for Ko. Okay. Because white can live in Ko here. Yeah. Maybe you have to play this one. If you're strong on the outside, you can play this one. And then it's not Ko anymore. But you have to have something else out here. Okay, so it's white. Do we care about Sente? Mm -hmm. If we play here, if we play here, black is like, good, done, I'm going over here. So guess what white does? Yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> and actually the exact, the exact thing that, that Z-Way just pointed out, if black were to play here, white still has a curl. So that's actually the game. Where does white have a code? Mm -hmm. Here. 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 Code for life. Very common corner shape. Do you have a chair, Peter? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. I know, we have the new, the new small stones. You guys can, like, pull forward more. The stones are smaller today. No one pulls forward. Okay, you guys are all... Gonna start bringing binoculars. <laughs> uh, so black follows up and says, basically, I still get the wall that I wanted. 
And now you have to live in code co for the corner. So guess what white does? Let's white start this code right now. Yeah, keep developing. Look, this is a monster. I don't need to live here to win this game. If black kills this and just gets all these points, there's still more than enough pie out here. So I just keeps building. I told you this was like the shortest recorded professional game, right? That should be a major clue in terms of how this game develops. I'm kind of surprised that black didn't take that point because... Play over here instead of this? Yeah, because, well, even earlier, because is when what was saying, I want the corner, mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, that's maybe as much as the corner on the side there. You know, it, it's, it's tough to judge. Yeah. It's, really, it's really tough to judge. Um, I'm not good enough to tell you if, if, if this was a mistake or not. Um, based on what happens in the game, it feels like this is too slow. Because white gets two moves effectively to develop the wall. Um, it's not responded to. But at the same time, if black takes this move to play this over here, and white goes, you know what, that's great. I'm going to force you down over there. I'm still going to get this pretty giant thing, and then I'm going to come back here and make this live cleanly. Incente, right? Because if black wants to seal us in, it's, it's goate for black. Um, yeah, I don't know. It still feels like white gets a good deal. So I'm not sure. I don't know. But in the game, that looks pretty scary, right? So if you were black, how would you deal with this? Oh, cry. Just cry. <laughs> Resign. Go home. Uh, I've, I've read that, that uh, some people think who were observing the game at the time this was played, that uh, Takumi actually was very frustrated and then just sort of accepted, like, life is going to suck for a while. <laughs> and he just kind of was like, eh. This was played as part of, uh, I think, the Meijin tournament that year. So, what's, what are your ideas for black? What are big moves for black? 3-3. Three, three. Where? Upper left corner. No. Here. We can, but what's the problem with this? Too slow. No, there's another problem. Helps white. Oh, yeah, white's, white's going to not be sad about this. Because... What if white gets really strong wall all through here? And then maybe white gets another sente move to play move over here. One of these. We're looking, we're looking at 150 point moyo, right, potential for white here. 150 point potential. Zero? Seven, five, reduce? That's not bad. What's the problem with only reducing? Yeah, it's like, like it, it feels like if we only reduce, if our moves only take away white's potential, we have to ask ourselves, do we have enough points to win? I'm aiming for that little stick over there. You want, you want to aim at the yeah. stick, though, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've got to aim at the stick. Yeah. And we, we should try to aim at the stick while not only aiming at the stick, reducing white, and potentially building something for ourselves. Where? Those ten. <laughs> Always wrong. <laughs> Not once has a student ever said this and been right about it. Never this right. This is bad timing. This is bad timing. Should have been the last move, yeah. But you're close. The idea is good. The idea is good. We're just going to find a more effective point. Maybe 10 forward? 10 forward. Up here? Not bad, but it doesn't build anything for ourselves. It's also very risky, right? Because right. how easy is it for black to make a base in here? Hard, right? Mm -hmm. So black will have to run. Yeah. What's the problem with running? You're going to give him some strength. Yeah, white, white will be able to get on top out first, basically, right. and get on top of us. So very risky. What about poking at 15 4? 15 4? Oh, 13 4. Oh, 13 4. Taking a peep first, making a preparatory move. Sometimes this is good. Um, but I don't think you have to make this exchange right now. Okay. Like, you know, not that I'm saying that this is not black's move. Right. But let's say you get a stone here. And white deals with it like this. And so now you need this peep in order yes. to, to strengthen up your stones. White's still going to always respond to this. That's true. Right? So unlike this peep, where white only has one way to respond when black plays it earlier on, at this point, 
um, you know, we don't need to make all these exchanges first because if we make the exchange, uh, we don't know we want that exchange, especially considering the invasion potential for white. Um, where over here, we want to force that shape. We don't want to force this shape over here. That didn't make any sense, but I said it anyway. <laughs> Terrible explanation. Um, so 9-3 then? So deep invasion. It's a bit far, right? Yeah, it's a bit far. Uh, white will play maybe there or there. Maybe even there if, uh, yeah. if black doesn't quite have enough room to make a base. Feels like invading that part is just going to give us more chances for white to build up his more Feels that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we're, we're going like, to, if we do anything really deep here, right. white's going to control the next 50 moves of the game. Right? We're just saying, I'm going to play in here, white, I'm giving you control. This point is worth the next 50 moves of directional play on the board. And sometimes that's the right case. You know, if, if white only has one territory and needs that territory to win, it's totally worth it. You should do it. You know, with reckless flaming abandon, just head on in and give your opponent control. Because if you have no weak groups, then hey, you just got to make that one group live. But I'm going to play the move. What? What is this move doing? Because it's doing a lot of things. Attacking the connection for 15, yeah, 9. 15, 9, right here? Uh, one over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if we get another move in here, what does this do? We have our own Moyo. We have our own dry, get, giant Moyo, right? That's awesome. What else does it do? Push pressure on the stick. Yeah, now if, now if we get a couple stones in here, you can start to make White feel a little nervous about but where is this stick going to go to live? It's going to have to live over here. And while it's living, we can harass it and reduce it more. And while if we get a really strong group in the center, hey, maybe that means we can invade in here as well. And hey, maybe we can even just take a bunch of points here and just form this giant moyo. So it's a really flexible move. It does, it does at least three things, right? It threatens to just turn this into basically, you know, moyo. It starts to start the stick... Um, attack, and it also gives us a foothold to do all sorts of other things on the board. White don't care. <laughs> <laughs> because even though it does those three things, it doesn't do any one of them really forcefully. And so white's like, yeah, I, know, I see what you're trying to do. It's a beautiful move. You know, that's nice. That's nice. But I'm just going to take another big point. And this, and especially, oh, this stone is there, sorry. That should have been there, right? Yeah. That'd be good. Uh, especially because if, when, if and when black kills this off, uh, the next natural way for black to expand is that way. So it is a big point. Um, if a student of mine played this move, though, I would, I, would, I would question it a little bit. I would say, I can't really say this is bad, but it kind of feels like there's something bigger going on over here. But, you know, here's the thing about, you know, Cho Yu, is that he's also really good at calculating, like, middle game territories. He's really good at evaluating. And so I think he just evaluated the value of this as not being enough points. And so he took a point move. Black response here. All right, now, hey, we got momentum, though, right? So next move for white, what does white have to do? Is it time to do something? Do we just play another big move? We're just like, forget the stick. <laughs> I never liked the stick anyway. <laughs> you know this is also the shortest game ever. That it was played out. So if we leave the stick alone, it comes under a severe attack. That's actually going to make a long game, right? Where the stick is running through the next 50 moves of the board trying to live. Top, trying to live. So it's probably not going to come under severe attack. 12-5? 12, 5. That's, oh, so close. I think I meant 4, but uh, yeah. so, somewhere around there. This stone is too close to this. How uh -huh. about 10, 4? 10, 4. The problem with this is that we actually have a defect in the stick. Oh. Right? Just, just connecting the stick. If, if white has to connect, then we have this type of move or this type of move, and we might have problems. There we go. So just play there. 
Nice, right? Simple? Black spent two moves to attack our stick. We only had to respond with one. And we still got some points out of it. All right, Black, your time to shine. Remember, you're Takamiya now. And Takamiya is starting to see this, right? And he's starting to go into Takamiya magic mode. It's like I can sense the middle getting large. My opponent has played a few moves in a row that are territorial. Six ten. Six ten. It feels like there's still too much space on either side to defend. I kind of want to follow up. All right, Takamiya style, right? Like, oh, you want some side territory? Perfect, take it. I'm going to expand my middle and just grow it. White does give, whoops, see, I did it, I flipped it. White does respond once. And then, unlike here, uh, this is where this would be a little bit thin, only goes to there. So similar idea, right? Still gives us that foothold. Start to form this giant thing. This giant blob in the middle is looking really, really large. And uh, White's like, you know what? You can have most of that. <laughs> but what do I want in return? What does Cho you want? I'd like, I'd like this. Can I have this, and you can have this, and we can all go home happy? Again, like I said, his middle game evaluation is really, really strong. This is all he needs to play. Takamiya, I don't know, I, don't, I think Takamiya mis-evaluated mis this move. Because Takamiya says yes. I'll take this, you take this, I can still win the game. And whereas... Right, basically black needs to make some, have some sort of attack here, or maybe lean on this and then come back and counterattack this stone in order to win this game. I think black just either miscounts, or again, I don't really know what happens in the game, but black thinks that this is enough to win the game. And so white, they just play this out. They just do a little hand fighting thing here, just so everyone builds up strength and there's no complications. Sure enough. What does everybody get? Get more yes. Yeah, everyone everyone got what they were asking for. So somebody messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't happen in a game of Go. See, maybe somebody didn't ask for enough. That means somebody didn't ask for enough. Somebody got a better deal. And whose move is it? White. It's White's move. So White takes the biggest point. And now uh, they both have a lot of points, right? Yeah. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Black still has some Aji in here. We'll try to use it a little bit. But again, White's really good at evaluating what he needs. So he just, he's like, yeah, I don't need that. That's fine. Totally fine. And they play this way. And this actually very much helps break up this, because whatever black try, or white tries to do down here, black will have, a, have friends to do something to get in. Uh, but what did white get in exchange for this? Well, I, th I think it's more just, more or less definitive, like definite territory. Right before this, this looked like it was going to become territory, but you know, black could have tried to invade in here and, and attach and do some things. But after all these exchanges, it gets a lot more difficult. And actually, white connects there now. So this is now instead of a moyo, this is basically territory. Uh, how about black? Is this territory yet? It's close. It's really close. So black's going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to start with here. What is the purpose of this move? Kills, Kills it cleanly, right? Avoids the cow. And this might be the losing move. Because, really? again, I've been foreshadowing what black asked for wasn't quite enough. 
Right? When both players get exactly what they ask for, someone screwed up. <laughs> okay, I want to drill that idea into your heads. So, if you're both happy, if you're both screwed. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. If it's uh, similar to like, if you can't spot the sucker at the poker table, That's probably you're, you're. you're the sucker. <laughs> Uh, because, well, I'll go back because I went too far. Yeah, white takes another big point. And again, black thinks, hey, look at this. This is massive. But white has reduction moves. To clean it up. And again, notice how black's not really worried about this territory, right? Again, black is only concerned with defending the really huge territory. Whoops, oh my gosh. I closed the app. Did will it open? This is the drama, there we go. Oh my gosh, it's playing. How do you stop it from playing? <laughs> it just played like... It... No, no, it's going. All right, good, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's going really, it's playing really fast. Uh, white ended here, right? So black now takes a big point. This cleans up a lot of the corner Aji. Uh, but again, the rest is endgame. We're in endgame here. Everybody's agreed what this board is going to look like. There are no surprises left. It's actually really quite boring. Uh, black defends here. And then finally, uh, it's there. White comes back to, to try to forestall any sort of severe invasion over here. And look at this. This is a move every one of you can relate to. Oh, no. Oh. This is so rare to see in a professional game. I think we're at move 80 here. We're playing this move at move 80. Uh, why is he not covering the hole on the right side? Uh, this hole? Yeah. Because there's actually not a lot White can do. If White saves a stone, it's like a dunk. Like, why can, why can save this stone? So, what was this game? If black, not, 2003. Oh, so it's fine. No. And if black plays here, all you get is this extra, you know, three or four points. So, I mean, it's big. It's not, it's not a small endgame move, but it's definitely an endgame move. Right. So, black plays this. And, uh, that's a pretty rare circumstance. <laughs> Like, that's a weird move to see at move 80 in a professional game. Yeah, is he right? Oh, no, I was counting. Oh, you're counting. Good for you. Black plays here. Again, black is still thinking. Whoa, hello. Uh, oh, dear. Okay. Black is still thinking, hey, this is, all, this is all big enough. But he can't play this here. Because it turns out... You know, white can make all these exchanges. And this is enough points for white to win this game. So I'll play out a little bit more of the end game. I think in the email I hinted I was going to play out the whole thing. The last, like, 30 moves are still really boring. It does go to 121 moves, though. Yeah. But they do play out this end game. Pull back. Exchange. I'll just make a little bit more of the final shapes here. White well, gets to play that move just to protect these five or six points. Black makes one more shoulder hit, perfecting the giant <laughs> Moyo right there. It's got to feel so good to play that move and just like make everything perfect. And then it's got to feel so bad to play it and then realize it's not enough points to win the game. <laughs> White's winning. And right to here, White wins the game uh, with, on the board with that before Comey by about two points. After they play out the rest of it, the rest of the end game, you guys can actually more or less predict. It's basically like your standard, you know, poke here, poke here, poke here. Like it's your, you know, your one point pokes all over the place. Um, Black does get this stone. That's maybe one of the last biggest actual moves left. Maybe that, maybe that's kind of big too now at this point. That's it. So it's it's that's your shortest recorded professional game. They do play it out to the end. Uh, which is just, again, I mean, Takami at this point should know exactly what the score is, and I think he does. Um, so maybe he was just laughing at how few moves were in the game. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I didn't get my money's worth from playing this tournament. I gotta play a few more moves. I don't know. 
but I think takeaways, you know, if we go back, um, you know, there are a number of examples when white approaches, black doesn't respond and white plays here is the next move. Normally we're used to seeing here, right, putting more pressure on the black stone. But when you have, when you have a player who is, or when you have two openings at least that are so strongly favoring the outside, sometimes you've got to be a little more creative and, and play a move like this and sort of force your opponent into just taking something that should be good for him. But, you know, go is, go is, when it's played between humans at least, I can't really speak to AlphaGo, but when it's played between humans, right, it's a little, still a little bit of that psychological warfare, right? Oh, you want the outside? Well, I'm going to take the outside. Oh, you think you're getting the outside? Well, here, I'm going to do something like this. And now how do you take the outside? It gets tougher. But locally, this is usually a bad move because white isn't so confident white will get this. But somehow, uh, he did. And again, Takamiya felt kind of like he just, like the whole second half of the game, he, was, he apparently, according to uh, live spect spectators, said he, they, he played very passively and just like, eh. <laughs> just whatever. Uh, I think Takamiya only, only used an hour, just a little over an hour of time. Again, he only played 61 moves or something. But still, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty unprecedented for him. Yeah, he usually is more considerate. Could be he's not used to playing another person who's focused. Well, but Choyu isn't isn't usually that like Choyu is pretty flexible, probably territory oriented, like not really super moyo you know oriented either. But I think I think it's just that that um you know Choyu had this idea of you know if Takamiya tries this, we're gonna we're gonna poke him. Um, and again, Takamiya's style right this, in, by two thousand three. He wasn't so incredibly dedicated to the middle, right? He was actually becoming a much more flexible player because uh, he had to adapt to all the really strong fighting styles because he played these Chinese and Korean players who would just fight him and he, could, he couldn't like, actually end up capturing anything because the fighting was too difficult. Um, so he'd be left as a giant warrior with nothing. So, so he'd maintain a more flexible style of play where, oh, are you really going to fight? Oh, that's fine. You can fight. I'm just going to take my territory now and, and you have nothing to fight for. Um, but yeah, this, this is just one of those funny games. Um, yeah. Question. So I don't remember. So the there's a largest uh, size rectangle you can enclose before your opponent can live inside of it. Um, so sure. <laughs> it, it like yeah. I don't know what that size is, but that moyo looks like it's. I don't. I so I don't. I don't know if anyone knows exactly what that size is because it is still dependent on every other stone on the board. Right. You can live anywhere if there's enough weaknesses in the shape. So what does this rectangle look like? Is it all one space jumps? No, no, like if you have a, a solid wall, right? Oh, if you have a, like... Like a completely solid oh, completely wall enclosing solid. a big enough rectangle, you can still live inside. I don't think so. Well, imagine playing on a 20 by 20 Go board and you have yeah. solid walls yeah, yeah. enclosing 19 by 19, you can still live inside. I don't think you can live. Isn't that the, in the game? Yeah, there is, there is a, you guys know this game where you put like one color stones all around the edge? Yeah. And all black has to do is just live. <laughs> like, that's all you have to do. Yeah. And it's a really hard game. So if you're saying it's like this, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine the game gets easier for black. Yeah. Have to try it's, it's a really hard game to have black live. Because white has friends everywhere, right? Black plays a stone. White's just like, you know, that's nice. Where are you going? I'm going to go this way. Oh, that's nice. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to connect. All right, that's great. Where are you going? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Just white doesn't die when you run over the <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, white, stronger. White. <laughs> yeah. Definitely stronger. Really, really hard game to live when white is just completely on friendly territory. So if, yeah, if, if someone has completely enclosed uh, rectangle on the board, I don't think you can live. Okay. If it's enclosed on three sides, they're prob they're, I'm sure there is a size at which you can live. I don't know what it is, though. So I'm actually sure, I'm, I'm, I, I would willing, willing, be willing to bet there is some size of this rectangle. I just don't know what it is. Yep. Maybe somebody's actually solved it. I kind of doubt that it's been like perfectly solved for, what, for different sizes, but it might have been. I think the thing I might be remembering is there is a larger size for which it has been proven that you can't live inside. That you can't live inside, yeah. yeah. Which doesn't prove the positive, right. just, yeah. yeah. So that's a thing. Any other like cool surprises here? Things. I it was really weird how they didn't 
right after the jump on the side, another one for white. Where over here, yeah, make yeah, that bigger. Yeah, just, it was like really bizarre because it's like you're it's special strategy, you know. Like like so often you're you're reading commentary and the commentator will say, "Well, this is special strategy, right?" Yeah, I feel like it is. Like, and you have no idea, but this is an example of it, right? It's like, I feel like it was almost done because it was against Cosmic Go first. It's like, oh. Well, I guess I'll just steal the You know, it, it probably was to some degree. Yeah. But but also it's also it's also White saying, you know what? I don't mind you having these points. Yeah, so well if if both players are fighting over the middle, yeah. if the middle's what's important, you don't really mind your opponent making points on the side even if they're on the fourth line. Okay. So yeah, I mean I'm not sure I would do it in my game. But how would you make it look like make it Convince the other player that you might want the middle when you're looking at the sides. <laughs> <laughs> what is that one guy that we do sometimes that's like, oh, I'm going to play for the outside and not anymore now? I can't remember. Uh, oh, changing. Yeah, oh, changing, changing, changing yeah. the strategy? Yeah. Can't remember. I don't know who that would be. But we've seen that in games. I mean, it happens. Yeah. But you can't fool them forever, right? At some point, you yeah. actually have to they, You know, yeah. you can see everything on the board. There is no fooling, right? There is no poker hand. There is for you no, to, oh, I really want the outside, don't play 3-3. Three, three. Right, so, so if, if the strategy permits you the ability to flip and change your mind very quickly and easily, well, that's good for you, right? But you sort of have to do it, it has to be a conversation between the two players, right? It's like someone punctuated their sentence instead of continuing it on, and that's, you call them out on it. Well, assuming that someone doesn't actually make an error, not right? Or something, you take advantage of it. Oh, but that's, but that's, Assuming that all yeah. players are making reasonable mm -hmm. moves, and they look reasonable, but if they're not, they're not good enough to fill the difference. But can you get to a point where you're both, say, fighting over the middle, and when you're fighting over, you get smaller and smaller, and at some point you say, well, oh, absolutely. the corner's now bigger? Yeah, that's kind of what happened in this game, right? Where, where uh, Cho Yu started playing these you know, yeah. corner moves, right? Said, you know what? I've got enough of the middle cut out, even if black makes a 50-point center, I'm just going to get two 25-point corners, and boom, we're back to, back to an even game. So it's like it was sort of like he kept haggling for the middle, got a better deal on the... Uh... I mean, he overpaid, man. He overpaid. So, you know, it's still, it's still, like, it's still impressive, right, when someone does that. But, you're, but it's a, go as a conversation that you have to have with your opponent. And if, if all you care about is the middle, there are ways to, you know, take advantage of that, right, by the opponent. So, yeah, yeah. So it's a conversation. So it's got to be a, it's got to be a mutual agreement in the end, right? And I think, you know, when when um, White was able to cut asked to cut this off, and that's what White got. You know, Black made a choice is to defend cleanly and just take what he had and never really get a good invasion anywhere. You know, he never got a counterattack. He never had a good invasion. And I think that was Black's choice. He, cho he chose a bad deal. And if you, if you are presented with a bad deal, you can't take the deal. You have to find a fight. You have to find someplace else on the board to, to change the situation and then go back and renegotiate the deal. And still the game, down, game, down. The game came down to just two points. Well, on the board. White gets yeah. Comey, so eight and a half points. Okay. Yeah. Japanese rules. So, yeah. It's a fun game though, right? Yeah. You guys all, are you guys, here's the question. Are you guys all more inspired to go play a game now or you just want to build these giant territories? <laughs> or are you all going to squirrel in your own little thing to say, I don't want the middle, I don't want the middle. I don't want to, I don't want to get suckered into a bad deal for, for a middle well, area where I can't is, defend. The thing is not to want something too much. Absolutely, not right? It's that flexibility. Badly. Well, that's, that's like the art of negotiation, man, yeah. right? Yeah. If, if all I want is a red car, yeah, what to the right yep. I'm going to get a bad deal, right? That's the only thing I care about. I'm going to get a bad deal. So you have, you have some good, you know, give and take. You have to, you have to be flexible if you want, if you want wiggle room. Um, there is the, there's something called the business triangle. You guys heard of the business triangle? All right, so this is especially true for anything you do in life, I think, that involves negotiation. You probably all know this before, right? But you have a client coming to you and they want you to do something, right? So they're gonna, they're gonna pay you some money, right? There's gonna be some sort of business exchange, some sort of negotiation. And uh, when they come to you, you tell them, okay, there's three things, you can pick two. <laughs> right, you know what the three things are? Oh, yeah. uh, cost, speed, 
speed, speed quality. and quality, right? You know, so this is, this is the art of negotiation, right? You're trying, you're, you're, you're maintaining the flexibility so you get a, a decent deal in the end, right? I'll give it to you fast and cheap, but it's gonna suck. It's good, the quality is not gonna be there, right? Or I'll, I'll give you something for, you know, it'll be high quality, I'll do it for you quickly, but you're gonna pay me a lot of money, right? There's this negotiation that takes place, it's very similar on the Go board, right? And it felt like, like Cho, Cho Yu kind of asked for three things when he cut this off. Right? He said, you know what, I just, wanna, I just wanna solidify this really quickly, I want it to be worth a lot of points, and I don't wanna give you that much in exchange for it. <laughs> and Takamiya was like, okay. <laughs> Deal. Actually, it's more, like, it's more like Takamiya thought the price he was paying was probably far less than it was. You know, it's probably, or he probably, again, I think, I think it was a question of evaluation. I think Cho Yu evaluated the value of this more than, better than Takamiya. So, so they could, they, they, they thought they agreed on a price, but the price was really different. So maybe it was accounting error. It might have been accounting positional judgment kind of error, yeah. It seems what it be what it feels like. But then again, we had this move down here, right? Taking this co off the board. If you know you're behind, you don't really want to resolve the co so cleanly yeah. because this is, this is like, hey, I've got a free move to, to keep the pressure up. I don't want to clean this up until I'm ahead. And so if that's, that's the other reason why I'm saying, why, why I think, and this is my own interpretation, my own lowly Don interpretation version of a professional game, is that um, Takamiya confused the points and the positional judgment because he went and played this move and took that Ko off the board. Yeah, that Ko is huge. It's probably the biggest move on the board. But, you know, he, he, he's losing. Um, you know, even though normally pros are taught to do this, right? If they have more to lose, right? If they have the bigger moyo and they, and they can lose more points, you know, they have to take the codes off the board. But you're still losing either way, so you, can, you don't have time for this. But what do I know? So anyway, this is good. So you learned, you learned a cool new Josek, quasi-special case Joseki move. You saw another Takamiya game, so you guys have seen like probably like five or six Takamiya games in the past year, so you now all have a new favorite Go player, whether you like it or not. And uh, you learned about the business triangle, so I think we had a good day. <laughs> AlphaGo played a big stick too. AlphaGo played a what? A big stick too. Yeah, AlphaGo likes sticks. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Game two, game two of that AlphaGo yeah. game. That was my favorite AlphaGo game, even though, you know, it just manhandled me say it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, go play some Go. Thank you guys.